Ladies and gentlemen, the time is upon us. It's study time. Hey, we're going to make some note cards, and then we're going to do some quiz questions from those note cards. Hold on to everything that you make today, because you want to give that to your teacher to get credit for what you're doing. Now, this unit is about tariffs, and it goes all the way to the war with Mexico, so let's get going. Please take out your first note card. You ready to do this? Let's do it. On the title, so you know one side's going to have the title, and then the other side's going to have the definition. The title of the first will be protective tariffs. Please write protective tariffs on one side right now. Protective tariffs. Now, I'm going to have some facts that are going to come flying in. I'm going to talk about them too, but I want you to be writing down on the other side. So this will be the other side. What I say, ready for the first thing about protective tariffs? Oh, I think my face is blocking some of this, so just listen carefully. Taxes on foreign imports in order to, this is what I'm blocking, raise the price of foreign goods, which protects American manufacturing. So it should say taxes on foreign imports in order to raise the price of foreign goods, which protects American manufacturing. Now write small for these two, because these first cards have got a lot of info, information for them. All right, so think about it. If you're America and you're selling a tie, and Great Britain is also selling a tie, it would be good if Great Britain's tie is so expensive so people will buy the cheaper American tie. So you put a tax on the tie from Great Britain. You put a tax on the imports. All right, who likes these tariffs? The industrial north liked protective tariffs because it protected northern goods from foreign competition. Remember, the north makes stuff. So the north has goods that it wants to protect, that it wants to make cheap. And you do that by making the foreign stuff expensive. Wait, who buys foreign stuff in the United States of America? Because they're agricultural, because they grow stuff. That would be the South. Last point, and then we're done with this card. The agricultural South did not like protective tariffs because they made imports more expensive. Think about it. You don't make stuff in the South. you got to buy stuff. Some of the stuff that you buy is from Great Britain. So Great Britain stuff just got expensive. So let's review. Protective tariffs protect American manufacturing by making the foreign stuff expensive. But the North loves them. The South does not like them. Makes sense. Good. Great. You guys got protective tariffs? We got one card down, baby. Let's talk about another one. Let's talk about a court case called McCulloch versus Maryland. McCulloch versus Maryland. My friend, this is the bank case. Hey, here's your first point right here. The state of Maryland did not like the Bank of the United States, so they taxed the bank in order to destroy it. The Bank of the United States was all over the United States. It was in Maryland. Maryland hated the bank. So they tried to destroy the bank by putting a tax on the bank's notes, which would destroy the bank. All right, so here's the question. What does the Supreme Court think? Who does the Supreme Court say should win in McCulloch versus Maryland? Here we go. John Marshall's Supreme Court, because John Marshall is the Supreme Court Chief Justice, ruled in McCulloch versus Maryland that the state cannot tax the national government. The state is not the same as the national government. The state cannot put a tax on the national government. That means the bank. The bank was constitutional because of implied powers. You know, nowhere in the Constitution does it say Bank of the United States, but in McCulloch versus Maryland, John Marshall said, that's okay. It's an implied power. It's an unwritten power to have it. All right, so we got McCulloch versus Maryland. Now I know what you're thinking. How am I ever supposed to remember this? Don't you worry. I just thought of a premium way first. Always remember this. Check this out. This money sign isn't very good. But you know how most money signs have two lines through them? Look up here at the title. It says McCulloch, and then there's two L's. You can write an S over those two L's to make the money sign. So it would read down here, down here, McCall money sign, McCulloch versus Maryland. And where do you get money from? You get it from a bank. Premium or non premium? Of course, that's premium. Okay, we got McCulloch versus Maryland. Let's do another court case. New card. I want you to label it Gibbons versus Ogden. Gibbons versus Ogden. Super sweet. Do we love it? Let's do it. Here we go. The state of New York tried to, this is what I'm blocking. I'm blocking the words control interstate. The state of New York tried to control interstate commerce 
by establishing a steamboat monopoly. A steamboat monopoly which would be in effect in New Jersey's waters because New Jersey and New York share the same waters. So here's the question. Who controls interstate commerce, the state government or the national government? Next point. John Marshall Supreme Court ruled that the monopoly was unconstitutional because only the federal government can control interstate commerce. Only the federal government has the power of interstate commerce, not the state governments. This establishes a broad national view of economic affairs. And what we mean by that is we're going to view the business between the states on a big national level, not just a small level that only the states are concerned with. What's a premium way for us to always to remember this? Think about it this way. Gibbons has two B's in it. Ba 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 ba. Gib ba 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 ba. For boats, business. Or if you don't like that, business boats. You know, that's another way to do it. Hey, we do one more card and then we got all of our cards done for our first big quiz. Let's talk about the Erie Canal real quick. Erie Canal, big old man made, I mean, you could almost call it a river, man made ditch that connected. The Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean. Please write this. Finished in 1825, this gigantic canal connected the Great Lakes, which is the west, to the Atlantic Ocean, which is the east. East and west were connected because of the Erie Canal. Cool. The canals and roads helped Americans move west because everybody's already east. You can use the canal to go west. So, finished in 1825, this gigantic canal connected the Great Lakes. Great Lakes west to the Atlantic Ocean east. Canals and roads help Americans move west. Cool? Love it? Hey, we've been working hard. It's time for a break. I think it's time for a study break. It's quiz time. Now, you make the choice. We just made four cards. I want you to make the choice. Do you want to study for one minute, or do you want to study for two minutes? You know, you make the choice right now. Set an alarm. Uh, I think I'm going to pick the music for the alarm when it ends. I'm thinking about Cosmic. Yeah, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Cosmic. Um, pause me. Pause me. I'll just be reading a definitive history of the American Civil War. I'm paused. Oh, my goodness. We're ready? Okay, let's do it. It's quiz time, baby. Now you take out a blank piece of paper. Please take out a blank piece of paper right now. Put your note cards away. You can't study your note cards. They're done. See what you know. All right? I want you to label it. One, skip a line or two. Two, skip a line or two. Three, skip a line or two. Four. Okay, got it. One, two, three, four. Cool. Good? All right. You do not have to write these questions. You just have to write the answers to the questions. First question, which region of the United States liked protective tariffs? Which region, region of the United States did not like them? So what area liked them? What area did not like them? Okay, write your answer out. All right, question number two. In the case of McCulloch versus Maryland, the Supreme Court stated that Maryland could not tax what? What could not be taxed, according to McCulloch versus Maryland? Cool. Cool. Number three. Which Supreme Court case established a broad national view of economic affairs? Which Supreme Court case established a broad national view of economic affairs? And four. The Erie Canal helped Americans move in which direction? The Erie Canal helped Americans view move in which direction? All right. We looking good? We looking good? We done? Pause me if you're not done. If you ain't pausing me, we're going. Let's see question number one. Which region of the United States like protective tariffs? The answer to that is the North liked them. Which region did not like it? The South. Because the North made stuff, so it liked foreign competition expenses. The South grew stuff. It did not like them. Very good. Hey, number two. In the case of McCulloch versus Maryland, the Supreme Court stated that Maryland could not tax what? The Bank of the United States. My face is blocking these answers, but it'll change here in a second. So it's the National Bank, you might have said, Bank of the U.S., whatever. Uh, the, bait, the bank could not be taxed by the state. 
Number three, which Supreme Court case established a broad national view of economic affairs? That is Gibbons versus Ogden. One way to remember this is boats, business, or business, boats. Cool. Hey, let's go number four. The Erie Canal helped Americans move in which direction? It helped Americans move west, 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 west. All right. Hey, did you do good? Did you do good? Think about this. This type of questions are a lot harder than you'll get on the test because it's not multiple choice. You just got to know it. So if you did well on this, that shows you're going to do well on the test. But remember, this ain't it. We got some more of these to go. Let's start going fast, baby. Let's do some more note cards. Please pick up another note card. And let's write this one out. The title of this one is going to be the Monroe Doctrine. Let's write out the Monroe Doctrine. Got it. Good. Love it. Awesome. Flip it over to the other side. Let's start putting some info down. First thing, in 1823, it stated that Europe could no longer colonize the Americas, the Western Hemisphere. Europe could no longer colonize the America. No more European colonization. It's already happened, but we ain't dealing with it anymore. Why? Why do we not want more colonization? Well, because it stated that America is republics. We have republics in America, and we're different and better than governments in Europe, which have monarchies. So right down also stated that governments in America, republics, are different, because republics, you like representatives. Better than having a king or a queen, better than governments in Europe. Okay? Great. Awesome. Last thing. The U.S. would not get involved in events in Europe. So if a Europe is having issues, we're not going to Europe to get involved in some military you know, war. But if Europe tried to colonize any of the Americas, the U.S. would intervene to stop the colonization. You mess with us. You get us, baby. You get the United States of America involved. We got Monroe Doctrine? Pause me if you're still writing. If not, let's go. Hey, how about the adams onis Treaty? Man, I tell you what, we've been working hard. Ah, 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 my hand hurts from writing. This will be an easy one. The adams onis Treaty was in 1819. It was the treaty in which Spain gave Florida to the United States. We received Florida through a treaty with Spain, and that was called the adams onis Treaty. All right, got that. Let's go to the next one. I want you to put road, canal, development. We got lots of roads. We got lots of canals, okay? So what did that mean? It helped spark industrial growth, and then write this in, especially in the north, especially in the north was there industrial growth, okay? Beautiful. So what direction did that help Americans move? It allowed Americans to more easily move from east to west. Americans are moving from east to west because of road, canal, and railroad development. We'll call that part of the roads. People going west. Cool, you got me? Pause me. Pause me if you need to keep looking. Let's go to the next one. Missouri Compromise. The Missouri Compromise was a slave compromise. Missouri was going to become a state. It wanted to become a slave state. So that upsets the balance. You know, there was the same number of slave states as there were free states. That's in the Senate, where every state gets two. So we have a balance. So write this down. In 1820, it's a slave compromise which attempted to keep a balance, meaning an even number, of slave states and free states. It's a slave compromise which attempted to keep a balance of slave states and free states. Cool? Beautiful? Hey, it drew an east-west line. It was called the 3630 line. It drew a line of latitude. You know, slavery was allowed below the line, but if you're above the line, it's not allowed. So you drew a line right underneath Missouri. Slavery is allowed below, but not allowed above. You know the crazy thing? Missouri became a slave state even though it's actually above the line. Maine was created as a free state in order to balance out Missouri. Missouri Compromise. Sweet. You got it? You love it? Hey, if you don't got it, pause me. Pause me. We good? It's quiz time, baby. 
because learning is fun. Hey, pick a number. You know, number of uh, minutes. One minute, two minutes, study the cards we just made. I don't know. Hey, pick a song and listen to it. You know, I'm thinking about Presto. Yeah, I think I'll do Presto. Hey, I'll be reading the definitive history of the Civil War while you're studying. So I'm going to pause myself. You pause me, too. And we'll be back in one or two minutes. Oh, my. It's time for uh, the quiz. L let's do the quiz. Put your note cards away. Note cards away. Take out a blank piece of paper. Or the same one we just did, you know, and you're just continuing to write on it. Here we go. Number at one. Number at two. Number at three. Number at four. One, two, three, four. Because I'm quizzing you on what you know about the cards you just made. Ready for the first question? Here we go. According to the Monroe Doctrine, what was Europe no longer able to do in the Americas? According to the Monroe Doctrine, Europe was no longer able to do something in the Americas. What was it? What was it? What was it? Number two. The adams onis Treaty gave the United States Florida. Florida goes to the U.S. Which nation controlled Florida before the treaty? So you can ask yourself, like, which nation gave Florida to the United States of America? Love it. Love it. You're writing your answer down. I know it's the correct answer because you're so super duper smart. Here we go. Road and canal development allowed Americans to move from where to where. Because of these roads and canals, you didn't have to live in the same place. You could move from one direction to another direction, which is where they mostly went. Writing the answer down. Ready for number four. The goal of the Missouri Compromise is that there would be a blank of free and slave states. There would be a what of free and slave states. Super sweet, good, great, awesome, love it. You guys ready to do this thing? Ready to check how we're doing? Here we go, number one. According to the Monroe Doctrine, what was Europe no longer able to do? Colonize. Colonize is the right answer to number one. No more colonization in the Americas. Number two, the adams onis Treaty gave the United States Florida. Which nation controlled Florida before the treaty? That is Spain. Spain controlled Florida before the treaty. Great. Awesome. Hey, number three, road and canal development allowed Americans to move from where to where? They allowed them to move from east to west. From east to west, they were able to be on the move. Number four, the goal of the Missouri Compromise is that there should be a blank of free states and slave states that is a balance. You want to have the same number of free states as you do slave states to keep things the same in the Senate. So that's why Missouri is slave, Maine is free, and then they drew a line. Hey, good. If you guys did good on that one, you're going to do good on the test, I guarantee it. Let's make some more note cards, though. I get siced for note cards. Here's another one. The cotton gin. Please write the cotton gin, the cotton gin, the cotton gin. Write it on one side, and then please flip it over to the other side. You ready, ready, ready? Here we go. Eli Whitney. Eli Whitney's invention, which made it easy to separate seeds from cotton. It was easy to separate the seeds from cotton if you do the cotton gin. Okay? Cool. Hey. This led to the spread of a slavery-based cotton kingdom in the Deep South. So because you have the cotton gin, you have more slavery. Because it's one thing to clean it, but you need to pick more raw, dirty cotton. So you need more slaves to do it. That's why the cotton gin led to an increase of slavery in the Deep South. All right, put that card away, get a new card. Let's call this the results of slave revolts. You know, there were... Two slave revolts, one of which happened, the other one was planned. The one that happened was Nat Turner's. The one that planned was Gabriel Prosser's. And when they were done, there were three effects of the slave revolts. Here we go. So write this down. Nat Turner and Gabriel Prosser's slave revolts resulted in, and we're going to go one, two, three. They resulted in one. More white Southern fear about slave rebellions. More white Southern fear about slave rebellions. So white Southerners are always already worried about it. Now they're going to be more worried about it. Two, harsh laws in the South against fugitive slaves. Okay? So 
The White South is going to respond with easy laws. They're going to have harsh laws to discourage anyone from becoming a fugitive slave. We have harsh laws because of the slave rebellion. And three, Southerners who favored abolition were intimidated into silence. If you were against slavery in the South, you didn't speak about it anymore because you were intimidated into silence. One, two, three, more fear, harsher laws, Southerners were, uh, who were favored abolition were intimidated into silence. We good? Pause me if we ain't good. If not, we're going to the next one. Please put in Democrats, Democrats Whigs, and Know-Nothings. So what's going on with political parties before the Civil War? Well, uh, let me tell you. First, write this down. After the election of 1824, the election of the corrupt bargain, the followers of Andrew Jackson were called Democrats. If you followed Andrew Jackson, you were a Democrat. Okay? So were there any other parties? Yeah. The two opposition parties to the Democrats were the Whigs and the Know-Nothings. The Whigs were a very anti-Andrew Jackson party, and the Know-Nothings were an anti-immigrant party. All right. We got them. We feeling good? Hey, if we're not, pause me. Otherwise, we go. We go. Next one. Oh, it's quiz time, man. Hey, study your note cards, you know? Break out a piece of paper, but, you know, study your note cards. I think set an alarm. I'm thinking this time of Constellation. You like that one? Yeah, I think you like that one. Hey, you pause me. I'll just be reading the definitive history of the Civil War. Oh, my goodness. It's time for our quiz. All right, let's do it. Bring out a piece of paper, piece of paper, piece of paper. Let's go, 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 go. Put it one, put it two, put it three, put it four. One, two, three, four. Remember, you just have to write the answer. You do not have to write the question. Here's a question. Number one, what did the invention of the cotton gin lead to? Please put the, what the cotton gin led to. All right. All right. Here we go, number two. The slave revolts of Nat Turner and Gabriel Prosser led to blank laws for fugitive slaves. What type of laws were passed for fugitive slaves because of this? All right. Here we go, number three, number three, number three, number three, number three. After the election of 1824, followers of Andrew Jackson became known as the what? If you followed Andrew Jackson, you were known as a what? Number four, 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 four. Which two political parties were the opposition parties to the answer of number three? So guys, look at number three. Whatever you wrote here is that answer. What were the two other parties? Write that one for number four. Does that make sense? The answer to number three, find the opposition parties to that. All right. If you ain't ready yet, you pause me. If you're ready to roll, let's roll. Number one, what did the invention of the cotton gin lead to? The spread of slavery in the South. Or something about there being more slavery in the South. Okay? It's easy to clean the cotton, but you still have to grow and pick the cotton, so the Slave owners want more slaves. Number two, the slave revolts of Nat Turner and Gabriel Prosser led to harsh laws for fugitive slaves. Led to harsh laws. Okay, it's not like they got more rights. In the short term, they got rights taken away from them. Three, after the election of 1824, if you followed Andrew Jackson, you were known as a Democrat. The Democrats were the followers of Andrew Jackson. And then number four, which political parties were the opposition parties to the party answer to number three? That is the Whigs and Know-Nothings. It was the Democrats versus the Whigs and the Know-Nothings. Okay? Does that make sense? Are you rolling, baby? Hey, if you're rolling, uh, uh, bob your head a little bit. Uh, uh. Hey, let's go to the next card. Let's go, baby. Let's start making some cards. I want some more cards. Right, common man. The common man, not the fancy boy. Not the slicky boy, just the common man. Flip it over to the back side. Let's start rolling with some info. Okay, what's this about? All right, it's a follower of Andrew Jackson. Followers of Andrew Jackson, they were known as the common man. You write that one down. You write that one down. Cool. Next point. During this era, property qualifications were eliminated for voting, which means all white men could vote. No one had to own land. Used to be you had to own land to vote. Now, 
you can just be a white guy and you can vote. So these poor white guys, these common men, became followers of Andrew Jackson. Last thing, last thing, last thing. The first presidential election in which all white men could vote was 1828. Who won? Andrew Jackson. Because the common man viewed Andrew Jackson as their kind of guy. A military guy, not a college guy. A western guy, not a slicky boy eastern guy. 1828, election of the common man. You love it? Don't have to own land to vote anymore. Next one. Please put spoil system. This is going to be an easy one. You ever heard, do the victor go the spoils? That means if you win, you get stuff. It was Andrew Jackson's policy of rewarding campaign supporters with public office. We're talking about, like, you know, jobs with the government, government jobs. To the victor go the spoils. Andrew Jackson's policy of rewarding campaign supporters with public offices. Jobs. You like it? You love it? You want some more of it? I'll give you some more of it. Write the nullification crisis. Nullification crisis. Write it out, write it out, write it out, write it out. Flip over to the back side. Let's start doing some things. Here we go. Write this in. South Carolina, they didn't like the tariff of 1832. So they nullified, which means canceled or ignored it. Remember how we said that the South doesn't like tariffs? So South Carolina says, I'm done with the tariff of 1832. I'm going to nullify it. I'm going to cancel it. All right? Big deal. Yeah, this is a big deal. A lot of stuff to write, and then we're done with this one. Andrew Jackson did not like a state acting sovereign, which means, you know, making their own decisions. You know, he feared that this might lead to the Union, which means the USA, dissolving, which means falling apart. He thinks that if a state can cancel out anything they want to, we're not really a country anymore. This whole country could fall apart. Because of this, Jackson threatened to send in federal troops to collect the tariff money. This ended the nullification crisis. So Jackson said, oh, you want to ignore our laws? We'll, we'll send federal troops in to enforce our laws. Hey, that's strong government stuff, man, to talk about sending in troops to take down one of your own states. Makes sense? Good? Great? Awesome. Let's do another one. Trail of Tears. Trail of Tears, Trail of Tears, Trail of Tears. This is the policy of Andrew Jackson in the 1830s that Cherokee Indians were forced to march from Georgia to Oklahoma, and that's where they were permanently relocated. All right? So this is about the policy of the Cherokee Indians who were forced to march from Georgia to Oklahoma, from the East Coast to the western part of the United States' territory, and that's where they were permanently relocated. A terrible stain on Andrew Jackson's presidency. Okay? Hey, I think this is the last one, but I could be wrong. We're doing a lot on this one, a lot of Jackson stuff. Let's do the bank war. Bank war. Here we go. You know, Andrew Jackson vetoed the Bank of the United States. Remember, the Bank of the United States was uh, saved by McCulloch versus Maryland. Well, now it's destroyed because he viewed it as a tool of the economic elite. Jackson's veto ended the Bank of the U.S. All right? No, there's no more bank. Jackson said it benefited only the rich elite, not the common man. So it ends the bank. Oh, we got another one. The last one. Put Andrew. Sorry, I'm eating a Starburst and it's delicious. Put Andrew Jackson personifies democracy. How did Andrew Jackson personify democracy? Well, first, what does the word personify mean? It means a person who's the perfect example of an idea, right? So, I don't know. What do you think? Kim Kardashian personifies... Justin Bieber personifies... Uh-huh. Uh, what does Andrew Jackson personify? Democracy? How does he do it? Two things. There are two examples of Andrew Jackson personifying, which means a person representing an idea, the democratic spirit. Two examples. All right, here we go. One, he challenged the economic elite. That's not the common man. That's not most people. That was the bank war. All right, cool. Two, he rewarded campaign supporters with public office. That's the spoil system. So he gave away jobs to his supporters. And if his supporters voted for him and he won, then that's a lot of people. That's more democratic. That's how Andrew Jackson personified democracy. Oh my gosh! 
Hey, it's quiz time because learning is fun. Hey, um, take I might take two or three minutes because we did a lot of cards. What should we listen to when we're done? What about uh, Radiate? Yeah, I, I think that's a good one. Hey, you just pause me while you do this. I'll be reading the definitive history of the Civil War. Oh, my goodness. Time's up. All right, let's do it. Take out a piece of paper, piece of paper you work. And remember to save all this work so you can show it to your teacher. Hey, number it one, number it two, number it three, and four. All right, you do not have to write these questions down. You just have to answer these questions. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Number one, what did the common man not have to own to vote? You know, you used to have to own something. You don't have to own it anymore to have the right to vote. Please write it down, 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 down. Let's go to two. Number two. What was the name of the system which rewarded Jackson's supporters with public office? It was called the what system. What system was that? What system was that? Okay. Hey, number three. There's two questions for number three. When South Carolina threatened to nullify the tariff of 1832, what did Andrew Jackson threaten to do? When South Carolina threatened to nullify the tariff of 1832, what did Andrew Jackson threaten to do? And here's the part two question. Which Native American group was moved in the Trail of Tears? Which Native American group was moved in the Trail of Tears? All right. Do you love it? Do you want some more of it? I'll give you some more of it. Number four. What is an example of Andrew Jackson both challenging the economic elite and personifying the democratic spirit? So number four is Andrew Jackson did one thing, and it was both challenging the economic elite and it was personifying the democratic spirit. What was it? What was it? What was it? You guys ready for some answers? Pause me if you're not. Let's go. Number one, what did the common man not have to own to vote? That is land or property. I'll take either one. You didn't have to own any property to vote anymore. That's the common man election. The common man liked Andrew Jackson. Go to two. What was the name of the system which rewarded Jackson's supporters with public office? That would be the spoils system. To the victor go the spoils. Jackson's supporters get jobs. It's the spoils system. Number three, when South Carolina threatened to nullify the tariff of 1832, what did Andrew Jackson threaten to do? He threatened to send in federal troops. He said, if you're going to nullify, I'm sending in federal troops. Part two, which Native American group was, mo uh, Native American group was moved in the Trail of Tears? That would be the Cherokee. The Cherokee Indians were located from Georgia to Oklahoma. Number four, what is an example of Andrew Jackson both challenging the economic elite and personifying the democratic spirit? That is the bank war. The bank war, the bank war, the bank war. Sweet, good, great, awesome. You love it? Let's do some more, man. I want you to put Seneca Falls Convention. Please put Seneca Falls Convention for a new card, new card, new card, new card, new card. Here we go. Up, up. In 1848, it was the location of the first major women's rights movement in the United States. You know, you just put first major women's rights movement. We're doing U.S. history, so you know that, and you're good with that. Okay? All right, awesome. Hey, uh, it was led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Elizabeth Cady Stanton was the leader of this. And the document, which is called the Declaration of Sentiments, called for women to be treated as equals to men. Women to be treated as equals to men. They wanted voting rights. They wanted the right to attend universities. And that was the Seneca Falls Convention. Cool. Next card. But abolitionism. Man, this is a, what's the expression you could say? Obvi. Belief that, the, that slaves should be immediately freed without paying the slave owners. The belief that slaves should be immediately freed without paying the slave owners. We got that one? Pause me if we don't. If you don't, if you got it, we're going, baby. Next card, William Lloyd Garrison. We're talking about abolitionism. Here's a big abolitionist. Let's go. It's a northern abolitionist who wrote the newspaper The Liberator. You got to know that William Lloyd Garrison wrote The Liberator. How do you remember this? 
Lloyd Liberator. Do you get it? Lloyd Liberator. Law, 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 liberate. He viewed slavery as a violation of Christian principles. If Jesus Christ is a God for all, he would say, then why don't the slaves count? Aren't they people? Don't they have souls? Aren't they children of God? We can't have slavery. It's an awful sin. That's William Lloyd Guerra, sin. <laughs> hey, new card to put Frederick Douglass with two S's at the end. Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, 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 Douglass. Uh, a runaway slave who became the most famous African-American abolitionist. You know, William Lloyd Garrison had the Liberator, but Frederick Douglass had his own newspaper. It was called the North Star. His newspaper was called the North Star. Okay? Great. Awesome. Got it? It's quiz time, baby. Hey, we just did a couple of easy ones. Maybe you want to just do one minute. I don't know. Maybe you want to do two. Hey, what should we listen to? Do you want to listen to Twinkle? Hey, I think that's a great idea. Set it for Twinkle. You pause me. I'll be reading the definitive history of the Civil War. Oh, my. Is, is it time? Already? I got a piece of paper. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. One, two, three, four. You ready to do this thing? Let's do this thing. Number one. Write in the answer to this question. How did the Seneca Falls Convention demand that women be treated? Demand that they be treated as what? Number two. What was the name of the belief that all slaves should be immediately freed? What was the name of the belief that all slaves should be freed immediately? What was it? Three. William Lloyd Garrison viewed slavery as a violation of what? William Lloyd Garrison viewed slavery as a violation of what? Number four, 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 four. What was the name of Frederick Douglass's newspaper? What was the name of Frederick Douglass's newspaper? Please write in the answer. The answer to that question. The answer to that question. Pause me if you're not good. If you're good, let's go. Number one. The Seneca Falls Convention demanded that women be treated as equals or as equal to men. Something like that. The women's right movement led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton, number two. What was the name of the belief that all slaves should be freed immediately? That is abolitionism or abolition. That's an obvious, that's an easy. Three, William Lloyd Garrison, remember his newspaper was the Liberator, Lloyd Liberator, viewed slavery as a violation of what? Christian principles. Slavery as a violation of Christian principles. What was the name of Frederick Douglass's newspaper? It was the North Star. Frederick Douglass was the North Star. Hey, we are almost there. We do one more set of note cards. We do one more quiz. You're done, and you are ready to kick a little booty on this upcoming test. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Please put this in the title. Please put Manifest Destiny. Please write Manifest Destiny as the title, okay? Are you ready for some info? Here comes some info, man. This is the belief that God had given the entire continent to Americans and wanted them to settle the West. So this land comes from God, but gives it to the United States, saying, take it, man. Take it from the Native Americans. Take it from Mexico. Do it. The USA should expand from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the Pacific Ocean. That is the belief of manifest destiny. All right? Got Manifest Destiny? Let's just talk about it then. Cyrus McCormick? Let's put in Cyrus McCormick, please. You know, Cyrus McCormick invented something. He invented the Mechanical Reaper. That's all you got to put. He was the inventor of the Mechanical Reaper, which allowed Americans to uh, harvest in an efficient way. All right? We got McCormick. Let's do another card. Put 54, 40, or... Huh. Fight. 54-40 or fight. All right? What is this about? What is this all about? Here we go. It was a belief that President James K, or belief of President James Polk, that the U.S. should have complete control of all Oregon territory below the 54-40 line of latitude. All right. 
So pretend all of this is the territory, right? See my cursor here? Uh, Polk said, hey, the line's all the way up here, man. This is the line, right? We control everything below that line. Great Britain said, no, it's not. It's not at 54.40. It's at the 49th parallel down here. So there was a border issue with uh, Great Britain over 54.40. But the bottom line is that uh, it gets settled at the 49th parallel. But it just shows that U.S. is looking to get any land they can. Please put Battle of the Alamo, Battle of the Alamo, Battle of the Alamo, Battle of the Alamo. What happened at the Alamo? It's a famous battle of the Texan Revolution in which a band, which means like a group, a group of Texans fought to the last man against a vastly superior force. The Texans fought and died. All of them died. They were all killed at the Battle of the Alamo. Remember the Alamo was yelled during future battles. You know, Texans won independence from Mexico, and later it was added to the USA as a state. Texas was its own country for a period of time. The famous battle is the Battle of the Alamo. That's where they fought to the last man. Hey, then there's going to be a Mexican-American War, and it ends with the Treaty of Guadalupe. Hidalgo, which is H-I-D-A-L-G-O, Guadalupe Hidalgo. All right, here we go. It's an 1848 treaty which ended the Mexican-American War. All right, cool, great. Mexican-American War is over, and what happens? Mexico gave the United States an enormous amount of territory in the Southwest. This is the goal of the Manifest Destiny, connect all the way from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Now, you don't have to uh, know what I just am about to put, but write it down anyway. Included are the present-day states of California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and parts of Colorado and New Mexico. The point I'm trying to make is there is a ton of land that gets taken because of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Manifest Destiny, we beat Mexico, we take some land. That's the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. That's the Mexican-American War. All right, it's quiz time. Quiz, 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 quiz. Hey, study your note cards for one to two minutes. I'm trying to think of what we should listen to. You guys want to listen to, um, how about Presto? No, we already did Presto. What about Playtime? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Hey, let's do uh, two minutes, two minutes. Pause me. Pause me, I'll be reading the definitive history of the Civil War. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, this song is just, it's incredible. Take out a piece of paper for the last time. Number one, number two, number three, number four. You ready? Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Question number one, answer this question. Blank was the belief that the United States should expand from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Blank was a belief that the United States should expand from the Atlantic all the way to the Pacific. Okay? Number two. What did Cyrus McCormick invent? That was part one. Here's part two. 54-40 or fight was a fight between the U.S. and Great Britain over the border of which territory? So what did Cyrus McCormick invent? invent? And then 54-40 was a fight over the border of which territory? Okay. Three, what was the name of the famous battle of the Texan Revolution in which Texans fought to the last man? What was the name of the famous battle of the Texan Revolution in which Texans fought to the last man? Last one, number four, which treaty gave the U.S. an enormous amount of land in the Southwest Territory? You guys ready? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Number one. Blank was a belief that the United States should expand from the Atlantic to the Pacific. That is manifest destiny. Number two, what did Cyrus McCormick invent? He invented the mechanical reaper. Two, part two. 54-40 or fight was a fight between the U.S. and Great Britain over the border of which territory? That would be Oregon, over the border of Oregon. Number three, where does the name of the most famous battle of the Texans Revolution, which Texans fought the last man, remember the Alamo! The Battle of the Alamo. 
Number four, which treaty gave the U.S. an enormous amount of land in the Southwest Territory? And that is the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Hey, how did you do? If you did well and you quizzed yourself and you were honest, I guarantee you you're going to do great on your test. Hey, that was a great sesh. I mean, were you feeling that? I was feeling that. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it again next test.